Well, hello, and welcome to the Thriving Life Podcast, a weekly podcast designed to help you thrive, not just survive challenges of life, leadership, and faith. My name is Nick, and I'm here with Joel again. And um, we have, I can't say it's exciting because we don't really have <laughs> a game plan. We're just going to yeah. freestyle. We're just going to like battle rap. There's potential for this to be very exciting. It, it could be awesome. It could get deleted later. <laughs> it Who could knows? Get deleted. Um, we may we may see, but it uh, may never make it to air. We <laughs> yes. So we kicked off a new series here at Mission um, this last weekend called uh, Heaven and Hell and Everything in Between. Yeah, um, which is you know enticing enough as it is. It's a lot of stuff. A lot of there's a lot of ground to cover there. Um, but um, we just kind of wanted to. I know you got some feedback yeah. from it. We yeah. just kind of wanted to vibe for a minute about that. And there's so many. You know, there's so many areas and directions that this can go. So um, I well, guess I, I'd like to start with that. Well, the funniest thing about that is, is like, you know, when I when we when, you know, Trav, our, our design guy, he, he's brilliant. Um, when he created the graphic, we were all like, oh, gosh, that's exactly what this series yeah. looks like. Like we, we when he asked me, what does it look like? I go, I don't know. And that's you know that for me, that's right. not normal. Like I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for me, I'm understatement like, of 2020. It is the understatement <laughs> of 2020. I used to be a graphic designer. So like like for me, everything has a like this is this is what this is the imagery. And I was like, I don't I don't know. And I just told him what the series is going to be. about. I literally like riff for like 20 minutes about all the things i'd like to talk about in the series and he's like okay i think i got enough and we sent us a graphic it was like yes like yeah. that is what this so it's funny when we put it out there people are like i don't know what this is but like i yes yeah, i'm excited was, about whatever this that is. was my experience and, i actually had my first time hearing about it was when i saw the graphic and yeah. i was like it, i just kind of visually was like that's going to be an awesome series and i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> it just it just looks cool well and when we started talking about it, it was like I started I started to get like from our content team like which you know you were in these conversations but like some interesting conversation like okay so wait what's the point of this series like why why are we talking about this and like what what is the overall hope and because we always usually when we're having a series right. I come with like a hey here's the big idea of the series not the message the series and here's the parts this is what I want to talk about in the series and for me um, we we've never done a series like this yeah. um, this is sort of a, a, a different. It's not like topical necessarily. Right. It's not a felt need. It's not a book of the Bible. It's not a character from the Bible. Um, it's not like it's not even really time sensitive, and it's not like rebooting life or right. anything like that. It, it's more of like a. It's this is this is gonna sound a little arrogant. I don't mean it the way this is the first <laughs> word that comes to mind. Like it feels it feels like more than some of our other series. Hopefully, all the truth that we're talking is transcendent. But like, yeah. this feels a bit like it transcends all the other things we're talking about. Mm. Like to me, it felt like a perfect opportunity when the world feels so crazy to go, why, why are things this way? Right. Like, and I think there's good answers to that. Yeah. And so like, we're taking slow steps in that direction, but like this first week was a step in that direction to go like, why, why? Cause there's, 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 I'm not saying that it that it's good that things are the way they are. It's just, there's good reasons right. why things are the way they are. It, in the world and in your life and yep. in your world and in my world. And so I sort of wanted to give people the opportunity to um, rethink and think more critically through a better lens about all the activities of life. Totally. I don't, and I don't know if we're going to succeed in that, but yep. like that's the idea. Yeah. And for the podcast listeners, and, and I, I'm hoping the podcast is going to grow in this season because I think we're going to talk, there's so much content that we're cutting from the series that we're dumping into the podcast for this season for people that are really interested in digging in, which I know people are because right. I've received more emails than I have, I think just about any other sermon asking for like more information and can you give me more details? Wow. And so- yeah, nerve. Yeah, I think I think people are interested in in you know in a, in a in a time period where you know the people that are dominating the news right now are uh, politicians, mm -hmm. medical professionals, and journalists. Um, all of which who disagree with each other about everything. Right. And so, like, is there anything to make sense of the world and and determine what's happening in the world and in our world and in my world and your world that is outside of those arguments, mm. that sheds light on those arguments and helps me understand them in a different way, in a, in a way that 
I think this is the part that, that, that really drove me in this is we're not having good arguments. We're not even having good discussions. They're not high level discussions. They're almost all like one side. Let me build up a straw man and knock it down. Like my, mm. my 13 year old does to my six year old. <laughs> like they have fights and yeah. he just knocks him over and then he beats his chest. Like he's done something. Right. And I walk over to him and I like flick him on the forehead and knock him over <laughs> on the ground. And I'm like, I mean it. So, but that's, what's going on. Like right. we set up these straw men, we knock him over and it's like, we beat the other team. It's like, and then the, the other side, they do the same thing. And, and there's nobody engaging in actual high level. And I, I don't want to get into the political off air. We had a political discussion. I was like, we shouldn't talk about any of that in the podcast. <laughs> or we we'll should. maybe get sucked into it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm praying we don't, but it's like, there's just no high level conversations about, about life and about, and, and to me, this series represents like, some simple yet profound truth in the scripture that really is everything we talk about. So in all of our series, we actually talk about these things and we talk about the effects of these things. We talk about the world and it is the way it is because of these things. And so I don't know, I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to figure it out myself and and the series isn't concluded in terms of content. And I meant what I said, like we have it planned for a four week series, but I mean, there's no reason it couldn't be five or six or eight or twelve. I don't know. Well, you had mentioned um, before. <laughs> you had mentioned, you know, some of the, you know, more people than than ever are reaching out to you and, hey, send me more resources. Resources. I have questions about this, and I want to get to that in a minute. Yeah. But just you, you know, what the thing that appealed to me about this and this and especially hit for this Sunday is, and not everybody's wired this way. I know it's it may be a unique thing to me, but for me, understanding why something is the way that it is is 90% of the battle of getting through it, yeah. you know, or overcoming it or being able to go, hey, that's out of my control. Yeah. And so when we look at the world around us right now, and I was I was just talking to somebody um, this week who was like, listen, I come home to an empty house after working all day. I turn on the TV and watch the news and watch the world <laughs> burn down around me. And they were telling me that to say, you know, coming to church was, you know, so huge for me. But I was just thinking if that's our only, you know, as you were talking, I was thinking about that. Like if that's our only perspective on everything that's happening around us, it yeah. can feel absolutely hopeless. Yeah, for sure. And so this series and, and the uninspiring, stuff we're talking, like not even just hopeless. It's just like, give me a reason to want to go get up tomorrow morning and right. put my pants on and go to work. Like right. why, why? Yeah. And so yeah. this, so this series is really touching on the why, like yeah. the context for what's happening around yeah. us and kind of putting it in front. And why the fight's worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, and, and that was really week one. And so, um, as we wade into this, I just, this is the caution is, um, like, you know, the, on the weekend, I, I, I try to have college level and above conversations, yeah. you know, to respect people's intelligence. This is, this is going to be more of like a, probably a master's level breaching on doctorate level conversation yeah. in these weeks in between, yeah. because the content we're cutting is sort of it's the details and it's, it's, it's sort of the next level push that a lot of, that gets tiring for right. people that in a broader sense and a, in a, in a long form, like teaching, like we do, right. it, it gets, it gets, um, you know, people come to this format, long, long, long form podcasts mm-hmm. that desire that, that right. desire more meaningful, higher level conversations. So we've sort of reserved some of the content that from the series for this conversation. So, awesome. So yeah. that's a that's a good that's a good plug and a good reason to subscribe. Yeah. If you haven't already and share, and share the podcast it, yeah. with your with your with your friends who want to go deeper. So with that, what are what's some of the stuff that you've Yeah, heard? so this weekend this was this was interesting. Um, you know, uh, you know, my email address is on our website. So I, you know, I, I just told people like, hey, if if you want some more background, because there were some of the things I was going to tell people and, ba- and basically I'm saying, hey, just take my word for it. It's in there. I didn't have time to cover it, but like it's in the Bible, and this this was super encouraging. I was like, but and, but if you want the evidence, if you want the details, if you want to dig deeper into it, it's you have to piece it together. It's a lot of scriptures. Um, just email me. Here's my email address. I, I gave my email address. I said, email me. I really do get it. it. Comes to me, and I was shocked at the number of people. I mean, tons of people emailed me and said, I, I hey that information. I want that. Hey that information. And you know, some of them also said nice things or or made some comments about the sermon, and they were all positive, but. Every one of them was about like, hey, I just I want that extra content, yeah. which was really encouraging to me because yeah. I'm going, well, that that's good. That means there's people in our circles that are like want to be 
they want to grow and be right. thoughtful and they don't just want the even just the college level right. version of this. Well, and, and the pa- you know, as a pastor, you don't just want people just to take your word for it. No, you know, you no. want people to dig that's deeper right. and to that's right. you know, find I them want them themselves. to trust me. Right. <laughs> but at the same time, it's <laughs> different I, than take your word for that's it. That's right. I, I really want them to to have worked these things out themselves. Right. So I, I'm gonna go through this really quickly just because um this was the main thing. So the main thing was the governance war in heaven. And I said, Hey, look, you're gonna have to you have to piece this all together. It's a lot of information. And I sent two or three resources to people, which by the way, if you're listening to the podcast <clears throat> and you want this, the information that I sent to other people, it's two or three links. Um, you can email me, Joel T, J O E L T. Or I'll just, I'll just put them in the comments on the, Nick will put it in on the comments. YouTube. So it's in there. Or if you're, you're audio listening and you didn't grab it down below, Joel T at missionaz.org. I'll send it to you. It's literally, I copied and pasted to, to all these people. So, um, if you if you want to write this down, um, I'm going to go through this really quickly. This governance war in heaven because it's it's really a fascinating part of the Bible that nobody talks about. We talk about oh yeah, there was an angel who tried to defy God and he gets thrown out of heaven, and that's all we know about it. But like, it's actually the crux of everything of of all the brokenness that's come into our lives into our world. It's like, and this is what I was saying. Like this sits above like a lot of the other sermons and things that we've done because. It all sits within this context, and it started with this governance war in heaven. And so, if you want to, if you don't want to get the link stuff later, you want to write these down. These are the key scriptures: Revelation twelve, Ezekiel twenty eight, Exodus twenty five, First Kings eight, <clears throat> First John three, Isaiah fourteen, and Genesis three. Genesis three is how this comes in the world. So, <clears throat> excuse me. All of these, all of these scriptures detail. It, we get from different authors, the same story, but we get different pieces right. of the story. So we don't get all of the, they, they, they all overlap each other and they, the stories confirm with each other, but it's like, you know, with any incident, you have an incident and a whole bunch of people watched it. They all saw it from different perspectives and we're getting all those different perspectives. Mm-hmm. And so again, all inspired by God, but uh, I start with Revelation 12 because Revelation 12, it tells us that Michael and his angels fought against a dragon and, and it uses this this language to like sort of be horrific and scary, um, but fought against a dragon and um, and and the dragon's angels, the dragon had angels and and the dragon didn't prevail, prevail, you know, Michael and his angels uh, overthrew them and they were thrown out of heaven. And so. So that begs the question, like, if you read that for the first time, you don't, and and the thing, this is the other thing is, you could miss this in all these other places, all those scriptures, because there's little things you're in, you're like, what is, what is that all about? Right. And then you get to the very end of Revelation, you read this thing, you're like, whoa, like, what is that all about? And then you go back and find out, you have to go all the way back to Ezekiel, and you find out later that, that, it's sort of later, but before, that Lucifer is described as this, this cherub, he was, he was a covering cherub in heaven. And, um, and he was perfect until there was an iniquity that was found in him. That's, that's the language Ezekiel uses. And he, Ezekiel defines iniquity um, as, as a transgression, a transgression against uh, the law or a transgression, a transgression against authority. Hmm. And, and so um, he was perfect until this iniquity or this tran- transgression that was found in him. And it was found in him because... Um, the covering cherub um, was supposed to cover the law of God. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to move quick, but I, I, I got to pause here because um, in the Old Testament, Exodus 25, um, God had the people reconstruct first um, in the tabernacle and then in the, the temple. He had them reconstruct the sanctuary. This was the center of the, of the tabernacle and later the temple. But and the, the very center is the holy of holies, mm-hmm. and this is where uh, the mercy seat, so the authority seat of God, and then also the law, which which in the tabernacle, um, this was the ark of the covenant, um, and the the mercy seat of God, and so the covering cherub in heaven. So this was a microcosm of the throne room of heaven, right? And um, in the throne room of heaven, there's a there's a covering cherub on either side, covering protecting, mm-hmm. um, defending, that's what they're there for, to defend the authority of God and the order of heaven or the law, the, the law or order of heaven. And what we find out is this one covering cherub decides, I, I, I'm, I'm done 
defending somebody else's order and law that governs me. I can govern myself. And Lucifer, who we find out is his name, um, he decides instead of upholding and protecting the law that he's going to launch a rebellion, Hmm. um, which was his iniquity. This was the first iniquity in if you think about it this way, if you're thinking linearly, this is like in chronological order, like this is the first iniquity that we know of Mm. that took place. And so, and, and, and this is important because it was about governance. Like it was about in the most raw terms. And this is what it, where it fits in your world and mine is who gets to tell me what to do Mm. or who gets to tell who what to do. And the order of heaven is that there's a God who governs over heaven. In fact, God, the father, we're going to talk about this in a few weeks, even within the tr- Trinity, the Trinity has a head. Hmm. It's God, the father. Now they're, they're equal and they're all God, but, but there's, there's a headship, there's a leadership, there's an authority within even the Trinity right. and, and that governs heaven and there's a governance of heaven and there's a throne and there's, 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 there's leadership and authority in all of that. And, Lucifer decides, Isaiah 14, we're told Lucifer decides, I will be like the most high. I can be like, I can, this is what he's saying, is I can decide for myself, determine for myself what is right and wrong for me. I don't need somebody else to tell me that. Mm. I can, and, and you know, in, in the terms that Isaiah, you know, it's sort of this free, intelligent angels should be able to make these decisions. Mm. I mean, they're angels. Right. I mean, they're perfect. Why can't I make those decisions for myself? And when this perfect angel decided that, that was his iniquity. Hmm. When he decided. So, um, you know, he decides he wants to be like God. Doesn't go well for him. He recruits, deceives. This is what the, the enemy does. He deceives. He deceives a third of heaven. A third of the angels of heaven all get thrown out. They all get cast down to, to earth. They get cast out of heaven. Not to earth because earth hadn't been created yet, but they get cast out of heaven. He shows up next at earth and he shows up to Adam and Eve and guess what he does? He convinces them of the same thing he convinced the third of the angels of is that they can be like God and that nobody should, I mean, you're smart. Like, you know, your situation, you know, you better than anybody else does. I mean, you know how you should spend your money. You know how you should how you should carry out your business. You know how you should treat other people. You know how you should respond when people hurt you. You're great, but you're not good enough. You could be better. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. You you're you're not perfect, but but I think I could do a pretty good job managing my own life, governing my In fact, at some point somebody told you that. Hey, look, you you can manage your own life. Right. And that's sort of what's at the that's what's at the heart of this. And so you, you know the story. Adam and Eve, they they decide they're gonna they're gonna take his word and they're they want to be like like God and and the angels and Lucifer are cast out of heaven and Adam and Eve are cast out of the garden hmm. and um and all of this unrest in humanity stems from this thing in the human heart that we want to believe the lie that feels like it makes us more valuable. We want to believe the lie that that aligns us with being our own authority as opposed to aligning us with the authority of God right. and the order of heaven. Wow. And so that's the, that's sort of the and again, there there's again I'll, I can send you a, a resource on this, but but this is all really important because and and this is this goes back to to why we're doing this series and why we're doing it now is because at this time in history, um, there's never I, to, again. I I only have lived in this time in history, but right. in all my study of history, um, like there are very few times in history where it feels like this temptation is as great as it is right now. Hmm. And I mentioned this on Sunday with postmodernism, and you and I had a bit of a chat before we came right. on here about that, about postmodernism, and you know the 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 essence of postmodernism is there's there's a there's a mul- there's multiple there's many many ways of looking at the world there's many different viewpoints and you're entitled to your viewpoint and your viewpoint is valuable and I should value your viewpoint and you should value my viewpoint and we shouldn't try to raise some people's viewpoints above other people's viewpoints hmm. except we do and while while there are many different 
ways of looking at the world. There's just not many right ways of looking at the world. There's not many proper ways of looking at the world. Like, like if you look at this and you go, well, that, that cup is red. From my perspective, that cup's red, mm. as you're saying. And I'm going, no, the cup's white. Everybody who's everybody knows. No, well, I think the cup's red. Well, okay, that's great. That's your opinion. I can respect your view, but you're wrong. Yeah. Like there's a right way of looking at the cup, and it's not red. And so, and 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 the truth is, is is we all hold the viewpoints we do because we think they're better than other ones. Yet we're in a culture where we're being we're also adopting at the same time this, hey, like we should allow everybody to be entitled to their viewpoints and their opinions. The problem is, is some people with certain power and position, their viewpoints do matter more because they're actually creating legislation or they're they're creating rule and order or guiding the the values of your company or your organization or an industry. Right. And um and you know, when when what postmodernism is doing is trying to destroy the hierarchy of views. We basically are saying, hey, there's a million different ways to do things and and they're all justified, but they're not. Hmm. And to get rid of hierarchy is to get rid of, of order. And, and I don't want to get too philosophical, but so this is another thing. This is important to this conversation is that, um, and I, I'm sorry if this all sounds really, really geeky, but just hang with me for a minute. Cause this is important to your life. Like you live in a postmodern culture and society. And we also live in a post-Christian culture. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people link those two things. Um, but they're actually, one doesn't, isn't a product of the other. Hmm. Um, modernity was what gave way to post-Christian culture. Hmm. Modernism, new ways of looking at things like enlightenment ideas. All of that was what gave way ultimately to a post-Christian culture to go, Hey, there's other ways of looking at the world. Right. Like you, there's other ways that are valuable because you know, the, the, the Christian thought dominated the Western world right. early on. I mean, the Western world, meaning meaning Western Europe and then ultimately the West, Amer- America, it, it dominated. And and modernity came in and went, like, hey, there's other ways. There's other worldviews. There's other things. And you need to value these other things. And we were all enlightened to new ideas. And so what that does, that led us beyond post-Christian culture. That was modernism. Postmodernism leads us towards a post God culture. This is what, this is why this matters is because, you know, now one of the things we talk about is how important the next generation is. And and this is, we have to be so thoughtful about this because when we try to um, level the idea of viewpoints and ideas and go, Hey, there isn't a hierarchy. We have views. You have views. We respect everybody's views. Um, we get rid of the fact that there are proper and right ways of looking at the world and doing things, and we're just going to respect everybody else's viewpoints. The problem with that is your malevolent viewpoint, not you particularly, but somebody else's, Mm -hmm. actually brings up hell into my life too. Hmm. Like it doesn't just bring up hell into their life. It does. But like if I'm doing business with you, it brings up hell your, your hell into my life too. And into your kids' lives, into your family, and like, we don't live independent. Like this, this, this idea of postmodernism thinks like that all of these ideas can exist independently, but they don't. Right, somebody's got to be right at some point. Well, somebody is right. Yeah, and it's like it, it, postmodernism is just like, hey, we've given up on figuring out who's right. So, and we're just gonna what we're, we're gonna say is we're all right. Yeah. So this is where this is where this connects. So we all can be God. It's you clear. can be God. I can be God. Everybody can be what God. What does that sound like? Where does that come from? <laughs> that comes from the very first iniquity. Right. Yeah. Like that's what that, and again, I'm not trying to oversimplify. This is not profound. This is, these are incredibly old ideas. Right. People have written a lot ab- about all of this stuff. And and I didn't come up with all this, like, but this idea of e- sort of, Equality of opinion, equality of idea, equality of opportunity, you know, entitlement to perspective. It it's a farce. It can't it can't exist because if there's no hierarchy and this is this is 
and I'm not gonna try, I'm gonna try to get too geeky, but if you want to read about this, like this this actually happened in our world. Like uh, Russia was on a fast track towards this in the mid 1800s. In fact, if without Nietzsche and Dostoevsky, Dostoevsky, uh, the the Russian Revolution probably would not have happened. And and in the 1800s, what was happening in Russian society was they were so quickly um, um, discarding God, period, any type of God, any type of religion from culture, because they thought it was bad and tyrannical, mm-hmm. like, because patriarchies are tyrannical, like, which which is true in some respects, because corrupt ones are, right. there are corrupt, they're well, tyrannical. The time, theocracies were tyrannical. That's too. exactly right. And so... So they're responding and reacting to all that, and they're going, we're getting rid of all gods. Right. Which, when you do that, leads to nihilism. Which, you know, again, this is where we're in the next level conversation. Yeah. Like, nobody nobody talks about nihilism, thinks about nihilism, but that's where we're headed. Right. That's where, so, I don't know what they'll call it, but, like, we went from modernity to postmodernity. Now, I don't know what's next, but it's on the path towards nihilism. Like, that's where we're headed. And, and for those of you who don't know nihilism, it's just that there is no... That, that religion doesn't matter because there's no existence of any sort of God or divine, and ultimately all of life is meaningless, which is the direction in which Russia was going, in, and and Nietzsche predicted it. Mm-hmm. I mean, he said, this is where this is all going, and people are going to start you know, destroying their own lives and our society and killing themselves, and, and that's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. And it's because when you when you when you try to and we don't think about it this way. Um, l- l- let's think about it this way. Instead of saying we're going to be like God, we're saying, oh, no, God's just like us. We're just bringing God down to our level. Mm-hmm. And it's like we're going to be like God not because we're raising ourselves up to him, but because we're shrinking him down. And that's just another viewpoint. Yeah, the Christian viewpoint's a good one. It's just a different one. And like, hey, I like to pick and te- you know, pick and choose some of Jesus's teachings. And like, it doesn't all go together. And I I like the new Testament, but I don't like the old Testament and, you know, or whatever it is. And, um, it's, it is the danger of all dangers. Hmm. It's the very thing that started all of this in the beginning. And we talked about it this weekend. And again, at the college level, like you make practical choices and you either, you either submit to the authority and order of heaven and you bring down its order and goodness and and um, beauty and hopefulness and and meaning and purpose and fulfillment into your life, or or you do what Lucifer did, and you decide, I nobody nobody could tell me what to do with my money right. or my stuff or my time, like. That's for me to decide, yeah. and 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 I'm the ultimate authority of me, and good luck with that. Like that's that's what brings hell up into your life, and you know, this is not a weekend sermon conversation content, but like just to be real for our podcast levels l- listeners who I think probably are thinking these things at a different level. It's like we need you. We need you to think about these things and think about what's really going on and lead others in it. Right. Like I don't know who the the Nietzsche's and the Doiskevsis of our day are, but like somebody's got to be speaking up about like where this is all headed right. to keep us from from this mean because you you already see this you see the 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 ripples of it like you know suicide rates are on the rise and 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 prescription drug use and addictions on the rise and like that's a that's a hopelessness and a meaninglessness that yeah. leads people in that direction and. You know, at the same time, we say we want to be the God of our lives, and then we realize we can't be, yeah. and we we don't actually want that. That that's a that's an awful burden to bear. Yeah. So at first blush, <laughs> was, like, what do you do with all that? Sort that out for us. Throw it to a sponsor. Do we have sponsors? <laughs> <laughs> at first blush, it it feels like I mean that's that's obviously a, it feels like a different tone from point people to Jesus. And yeah, yeah, sure. It feels like a different tone from even a few weeks ago during third party series. We're like, hey, let's listen. Let's yeah. learn. Let's yeah. so help. Yeah, that's know, good. Help put those two things yeah. together. For, so that's for that's listening. that's actually really good perspective because it, it sounds like they're opposites. It sounds like they don't go together. Yeah. Um 
Because if I think, hey, my position's right and I know that it is, yep. and I'm standing against you know, postmodernism because I know this is right. Yeah. Why should I listen yeah. to you at all? Other so than I, just I, be pulled nice? it, I, I had this in here and I pulled it out. I don't have it in my notes right now. So I can't remember. It. I believe it's in first John, second, first John. I don't know. Um, but one of the new Testament writers, I'll find it out. Uh, wrote about this when, when he talked about, um, gosh, where was that? Maybe it was first Peter, but he, he talks about those who confess Jesus as Lord, but then don't follow his word. Mm. They, they, he, and he calls them liars. Mm. He says they're, they're liars. They, they're, they're liars. And the truth is not in them is what he says. And, and we're going to talk about, you know, truth and deception this coming weekend. Yeah. But he, he says there, and, and here's why it's because you fundamentally said, okay, I'm going to identify with Jesus as my Lord and my savior and my King, because I need one. And everybody needs one. And instead of me, me being my own God or my own king or me trusting in whichever party is controlling the government at the moment um, or me trusting in the American dream or the almighty dollar or whatever it is, whatever it is that we allow to govern our lives, I've decided that I need a savior and I need to be rescued from my sins, my transgressions, my iniquities, my brokenness, my proclivity to go the wrong way, to miss the mark. Right. So I need a savior and I need him to rescue me. I need to put his life in me to help me live out my life. And then we go off after that, we get our fire insurance, meaning I get the seal, the deal to avoid hell. And we decide for now, I still kind of want to live my life however I want to. Right. And the reason it feels different is because this is like the, you know, that's the salvation message. That's the, hey, come trust in Jesus, give your life to him, acknowledge him as your king, which was what third party is. We are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. This is, now let's live like it. Right. Right. Like, not just like, let's proclaim it and let's represent it, but like, let's actually allow the kingdom of heaven to manifest itself in our lives and live it out. And, and that's the moment by moment every day, I'm going to either choose to bring heaven down or pull hell up into my life. And I, I think, I think also maybe the tone has shifted as I, I, I've been in quarantine too long. Maybe that's, <laughs> yeah, that's part feisty. of it. But <laughs> But also part of it is like, I just realized in this season, like how hopeless we really are as a society. Mm -hmm. And, and even as Christians, like, you know, some stories that are close to home, like in my family, in our church of people who, who are, have just decided they're done. They're going to walk away and from their faith or, or they've made decisions in this season where they instead of trusting God in the season, they and, and and trying to understand how to respond and how to live in the midst of adversity, and instead of going to the scriptures to understand how to respond and react to the things that life is confronting them with, be it loss of job and income and being able to provide for their family, family, be it increased tension in some of their most important relationships, maybe a marriage or. Uh, somebody they lean a parenting with, with parents or challenges with their kids or being overwhelmed with school stuff. Like instead of looking to and taking your cues from being guided from figuring out how to bring order to the chaos you're experiencing around you by the authority that you proclaim, it's the book of Judges. Like everybody does what's right in their own eyes, and mm. it's more chaos. If I don't know if this was intentional, I maybe I should know if this was intentional or not. But this series, following the third party series, actually, like you know, we had this vibe during 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 third party where we were pointing people to this you know third kingdom. We're not citizens yeah. here. Like our allegiance is to this is to this other kingdom, and everybody's excited about that. And in this series, like. And, and here's now, what that means. And now let's That's tell right. you what that. What okay, that everybody's bought into like. that. Yeah. 
Now sit down and pull your toes in because I'm right. going to tell you what that means. Welcome yeah. to the kingdom that you're I mean, citizen of. That, it wasn't intentional. <laughs> but, but I will say it was intentional, um, not by me. And, and this is where you have to believe in, in transcendent things. Like, I, like it was a very easy switch to flip because yeah. like now it feels like, okay, and this is going to sound bad, but like I'm going to say it anyway. There's a, oftentimes I say things that I shouldn't say out loud on the podcast, but so that's a reason you should listen to the podcast too. But um, <laughs> like it was sort of for me like, okay, now that we've got that all out of the way, like, you know what I mean? It's like, it was sort of like hard to toe the line when you're going like, okay, it, are people, because everybody's listening going, okay, is, is Joel trying to get me to push left or push right or what, what I'm trying to figure out what his agenda is. And like, I'm trying to go very clear. I'm not even trying to like go down the middle. I'm, I'm trying to rise above that and go like, Hey, we're not talking about either one of those. And like, and that's a very, you know, you can easily say things that sound one way or the other. And so like, there's a, there's a, a bit of an exhaustion that comes with like, teaching in that way or people will take what you say and, and, and turn it oh he's what? talking about yeah. my side yeah. And, and, yeah. and another person will hear the exact same yeah. thing oh he's yeah. talking about my that's side. right that's right <laughs> that's right so trying to avoid that is is a bit exhausting but when you get to the other side of that it's like okay now do we all agree this you know we're part of the kingdom of heaven right. and that's that's where our allegiance should be once we gain agreement on that now it's sort of like okay guess what like all the stuff about that's really clear. Yeah. Like, let me give you some context for what that means. And let me tell you how you know when you're out of bounds on that. Yeah. And, and there's another kingdom too, by the way, that's trying to get you. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. That's right. There's a, there's a fourth party Yeah. and, and it's not so good. Yeah. Um, it's not good at all, actually. So, you know, I, you know, this, this, I don't know that there's any way to wrap up this podcast all nice and neat. In fact, I know there's not, but to say, Hey, tune in next week. Um, because, we're going to continue to push beyond and and for those of you who care like and and I don't I don't claim by the way to have like I didn't I didn't I don't feel like we gave people a lot of answers today. Well, yeah. I'm not really trying to give answers. I'm just trying to get people to think about really really hard things right. and really really like that are really true. Right. And that matter and 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 you're you've got to think deeper and sort them out for yourselves. Absolutely. But I I I I think we've got to move beyond the straw man conversations where you know, it's like anybody knows how to set up a a representation of somebody else's viewpoint that they can knock over very easily. Mm-hmm. We can all do that, and th- those are those are pathetic conversations. Yeah. Um, this dialogue for me, it, not just in this podcast but in this series, is like a. And, and the good news is, is like we're we're not talking to another side. Mm-hmm. We're talking to the other side of ourselves that's tempted like Lucifer, like Eve, then Adam and all of humanity that followed to want to act like the God of our own lives. Mm-hmm. Like, and nobody can tell me what to do. Um, I, I should be able to, I'm an intelligent, free being. Yeah. I should be able to do what I want to do. And, great but that's not what you signed up for and that's not what's going to make things go well for you right you were bought with a price right and um and it was very high price because of how valuable you are and all the other stuff that went along with it to guide you and teach you how to walk in the newness of that life was so that things would go well for you but yet somehow in postmodernism, we've turned that into well. Those are those are viewpoints that are not mine. They're not what the way I want things to go for me. Well, it's great. Then you do things the way you want things to go for you. But when they go horribly wrong, don't point back at God and go, God, why are you allowing this to happen in my life? Because I can tell you exactly why. It's because you pulled hell up into your life. That's why. Wow. And so. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna say. I'm not angry. I was gonna say I like I like third I just party. Passionate. I'm not I like angry. third party Joel a lot better. <laughs> I'm glad we're doing a little bit of social distancing. I will say I couldn't help but think about the person that tuned into this that maybe just found it or like <laughs> their mom sent them the link like, hey, check out this podcast. Like if you if you stuck around this far, thank you yeah. <laughs> for staying. But like, there's so I'm many. Really, I really am not angry. Like the people, probably, I just was listening. I was listening to myself talk, and I was like, I. I think I sound angry, but I'm not angry. I just, well, it just you're matters, talking, you're, you know? you're like, talking about stuff that sounds 
it sounds like fantasy, yeah. but like you're saying, no, like this is yeah. this is real. Yeah. Like this is what's happening. That's a good way know, of saying these it. are these these are these you know unseen forces. But like, and so it seems like it seems kind of crazy, but if you think about it, like it's not these aren't unfamiliar. Like this storyline is not yeah. unfamiliar right. at all. That's right. Like we see it in human culture going back thousands of years in other forms i mean you, like the transformers <laughs> movies like plot line sure. you know it's like yeah. like we like we tell this story to ourselves a- any, over any over movie again. with with spiritual overtones yeah like, absolutely all of them there's some we were talking before the podcast yeah. there's there's yeah. movies that dir- that deal directly that fallen that denzel washington yeah, movie yeah. in the 90s sure. that scared the bejesus yeah. out of me yeah um and so like it's not like these like we're making this up or um, that it's that crazy because because the imprint of of this war between these worlds has bled into the non non religious and non faith parts of of yeah of humanity yeah. going back like I said generations yeah. and generations and, and to be sure, um, religion, uh, the church, patriarchal systems have have caused people harm. Yeah. I mean that's it's what led to this to some degree. But the answer isn't to throw it out. Right. The answer is to get it right. Hmm. And we've gotten it wrong too many times and so that that's the that's the that's the and and this matters cuz like you know so much of the way the church has represented Jesus to the world around us um at people who aren't like us, people who have not surrendered their life is not the way Jesus responded to people. Right. It's not the way Jesus reacted to people. And and there's a there's a bit of a, a self righteousness in that that has said, no, no, we're right. And this is the right viewpoint, which is true. Like there is a hierarchy to our viewpoint. The way we've gone about imposing that on other people is not good. Right. And that's why there's the resistance. And that's why there's this, well, that's great. That's that's a good viewpoint for you. And I'm entitled to my viewpoint. And we want to legislate everybody's everybody's um, you know, entitlement to their viewpoints, but it, it doesn't it it doesn't go well for society. So well, all right, gonna, stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna wrap there. We're gonna talk more about this next week. I don't know if that's a if that's inspiring you to tune yeah, <laughs> to yeah. tune next week or not. I mean, I wish we could say we could talk about college football, but we can't yeah. do that either. Yet. Um and that actually probably I'm still be more conflict. Out. I'm still holding out. Them. Yeah. <laughs> but um we're gonna drop some of those resources in the links in the uh, comments on YouTube. But and you know, like Joel had mentioned, if you want more information or you have another question about this stuff, um, which I'm sure we haven't touched on, you can email him as well at Joel T at missionaz.org. So thanks again for tuning in and we will see you uh, next week.